fellow brethren, praise the Lord today. Today I'm your service host, I'm Mr. Twin Henry. I welcome you to this online service today. Please, wherever you are, we are so glad that you are a good and ardent viewer on Facebook, YouTube, in your living room. We are so blessed that you are ever watching. So today, ladies and gentlemen, join me as we welcome our praise and worship team to sing they as they take us through the praise and worship. And after that, we shall have our only and only pastor, Dr. Matthew Mutagubia. He will give us the word. And please, you will be blessed. You will tell me. Stay glued and stay on your TV. Are you ready? Shout Jesus!
fighting for us. Here we go now. Oh 
who you are. So you are. Oh, I am loved by you. Believe it. So who I am. 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 So you are good, good father. So you are. So you are. Yes, so it's who you are, God. So you are. Oh, I am loved by you. It's who I am. Lord Jesus, you're indeed a good father. You're indeed a good, good father. And I am loved by you. That is what I am. Thank you, Lord, for being a good father. Thank you for holding me when I'm down. Thank you for your provision, God. Thank you for your protection, Lord. Thank you for your love. Love knows no end. This reckless love took you to the cross, Lord, for me. Until that, you still love me. Even when I wrong you, even when I feel like I'm the dirtiest person on earth, Lord, you still love me and pull me close. And hold your arms up, on, up open wide when I run to you, Jesus. And I also want to pray, Lord, for a person this morning, God, that might feel like I am too dirty or I don't feel the goodness of God. I don't feel like God has been a good father to me. Lord, I'm praying that, Lord, you, again, you will give them joy. I'm speaking peace in their lives, oh God. I'm speaking provision in someone's life. I'm speaking into someone's children today. There's a parent that has been disturbed by their kids, Lord. Father King of Mercy, I raise those children to you, God. Father King of Mercy, will you be a good father to everyone? We bless you, Jesus, and we glorify you in Jesus' name. And somebody said, Amen. And amen. Ah, good morning, everybody. Wow, what a wonderful Sunday to join in church together with you and your family right there. Uh, we are continuing our series of sermons on the goodness of God. And as I told you as we're starting and Martha eloquently said last week, God's goodness is available to us regardless of the circumstances that we are going through. And, and I just want, uh, every Sunday I wanted to just come to you and, and give you testimonies of the goodness of God because the Bible says we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies. So today I am joined by Fred and Brenda Wariaura and they are going to be giving us their testimony of God's goodness. How has God been good to you? Wow, thank you so much. Uh, good morning, brethren, and we want to thank God for this wonderful time. Pastor, the Lord has been good. Indeed. In this period yes. where everybody is saying things are hard, things are tight, but we put our focus on God, yes. and indeed he's been faithful, he has kept us very healthy, Amen. we've had the jobs to do, yes. and he has provided. Yes. Immensely, immensly provided. Amen. And uh, you know, when I get excited, she talks more. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brenda, uh, yeah, uh, your husband just threw you in the waters. Can you, uh, how has God been to you? I want to, to hear some very specific things because, you know, m we know that there are a lot of people that are going through really tough periods of time uh, uh, during this period. People have lost jobs, people's children are not going to school, uh, we, we've heard of uh, uh, diseases, we've heard of so much that is going on. But how have you seen the goodness of God? Uh, you've mentioned, say, thank you, Pastor. Yes. Good morning, the whole world. Indeed, yeah. yes. You know, we have people from Houston <laughs> watching right now. Uh huh, yes. <laughs> so for them, it's night. It's night. Mm -hmm. It's about, Good, yeah, it's, uh -uh. It's really wake up. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've talked about people losing jobs. Yes. The Lord still remains good yes. and he remains good yes talking about losing jobs mm -hmm. no matter the circumstances for example my husband's salary was cut by a huge percentage, percentage. Yep. that has been a story all along. yes but that has taught us and we've seen the lord that he actually provides for us yes. beyond our paychecks so the lord has provided even more 
than when he so had the full know that your dependency is not on the check but yes, on the most high exactly. who knows how to give good gifts to his children yeah. yes mm -hmm. the lord in this time of covid i'm proud to say i'm one of the frontliners yes I have served my country. I and love you, what you I do. You served us. <laughs> it's a privilege. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the Lord has been blessing us. He has blessed us. When, when I was getting in, yes. a number of my counterparts, my former classmates at the School of Public Health, yes. were scared. Yep. But I said, I'll move in. Yeah. But the Lord was saying, this is little did we know anyway yes. but he used that he who is a way maker yes. miracle worker yes. and promise keeper yes. he says come and buy oh, come if on, you know mm. so the lord that is the avenue he has used yes. let me tell you each week mm -hmm. there's no week that has gone by without money coming in your Not work. necessarily from that work, uh -huh. by the way, uh -huh. but you pe meet people along the way. And let me tell you, brethren, when you're diligent, the Lord gets so amazing. In this time, yes. we have acquired certain assets. When others are selling off their own assets. We are acquiring. Wow. That's the Lord. Yeah. We belong to, at the city church, uh -huh. we belong to... Uh -huh. we, we, we call them tables, uh, or uh, what other churches might call um, groups, group sales, sales. Yes. yes. So ours is the blessed to bless table. Uh -huh. In this time, yes. the Lord blessed us, and we actually were also able to bless. So the Lord has been good. We have not fallen sick. The devil robs us through the money we pull out for medication, for whatever it is. But, yeah, instead of borrowing, we've actually been lenders. That's what the scriptures say. It sure does. Yes. So the Lord has been good. We've eaten, we've dressed, and I don't know, it's amazing. And, Pastor, you know what? Even uh, when the salary was cut by a huge percentage, yes. I got an opportunity to serve yes. in another op uh, organization, uh -huh. And we're paying more than the, than percentage, the percentage that was, that cut. was cut. Yes, because in this period. Because he knows <laughs> yeah. how to take care of his, his own. Yeah. He's a faithful God. A mm. yeah. Wow. Come on, somebody. Can you give a hand clap Amen. to Jesus <laughs> where you are? Let us thank him. We want to thank you, Brenda. And, thank you, Pastor. And Fred for the testimony. God is so wonderful. God is good. What he has done for them we believe he is getting ready to do for you in this time. So I want you to get ready. We are going to go into the word of God as we continue our series of sermons on the goodness of God. I just want, I just feel like starting with the word of prayer as we go into this word. Father, we bless your name. Great is you and worthy are you to be praised, worshipped, honored, and given all that there is to give, if we have anything that indeed we can give. Because what can we give to you who is above all things? You have loved us with a love not, that knows no end. You have shown us that there is nothing that is impossible with you. And so I am praying for whoever is listening to this word this morning. Master, I am praying. And there are others who are watching it in the evening. There are others who are watching it in the afternoons. I am praying that whatever, wherever the time they are in, that they have met, they, they, they have decided to watch and see and hear. Lord, speak to them so clearly and so powerfully that their lives will never, never remain the same. For the Bible has told us that the entrance of your word brings light. It is that light that shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. You came to reveal to us the way to the Father, the way of goodness and the way of grace. And so I am praying right now that you will open blind eyes, you will open hearts to understand, and that your spirit will flow so freely today in the sitting room, freely today through that phone, freely today through the computer, freely today through the television, Lord, freely today so that the man of God and the woman of God will be encouraged to see the life that you have 
have given to us through your son Jesus Christ and how that life ushers us into a goodness that should, we could not have deserved but because you are good. Hallelujah. Give God the praise and give him a hand clap right there where you are in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, th there is this gentleman called C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis was a, a professor at Cambridge. And uh, in his later years, he gave his life to Jesus Christ and became so fascinated by who Jesus was. Because the truth is, when you come to Jesus and you fully understand who he is and what a gift that God has given to us through this man, Jesus Christ, your life will never lack excitement. I've always told people that if you are a Christian in Jesus Christ and you are not excited about life, that is abnormal. It can be an experience you go through, but never allow it and, and, and think that that is normal because it is not not normal for a Christian to live a life without excitement because, because of what Jesus has done for us. When you understand the love that God has bestowed to upon us through the man Jesus Christ, you can't, you, you can't help but leave your head raised high with a smile that you cannot explain, with a joy you don't know where it came from because Jesus Christ is exciting. He is what God has given to us through this man. He is, is so profound, is so powerful. When you understand it, it changes everything in your life. And so C.S. Lewis got very excited about Jesus. And every time he would walk, he would talk about Jesus. He wrote books about Jesus. He, 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 he would sing songs about Jesus. He would watch dramas about Jesus. Oh my goodness, he, he, he loved Jesus. And he was a professor at Cambridge. And one of his, sometime, one time, his students got, gathered around him and, and asked him, but professor, what is it that makes Christianity different from other faiths, from other belief patterns, from other worldviews. And C.S. Lewis told them, you know what? The big deal is that for the Christian, it is God's goodness that is expressed in his gifts that makes the whole difference. Now, you will not understand that until you understand that the ultimate gift that God has given to us is Jesus Christ, His Son. And when Jesus came on this earth, He came through the nation of Israel because Israel are God's promised people. He has a covenant with their father Israel, with their father Isaac, with their father Abraham. He has a covenant with the Israelites and through them the Messiah was to come. But when Jesus came on this earth, chose 12 men to walk with, their understanding of the Messiah, their understanding of Christ was that Christ was a reserve of the Jews. He was a reserve of the Israelites. And so he had come to give life, yes. He had come to give hope, yes. He had come to give healing to the sick, yes. He had come to make things new, but exclusively for the Israelites, it was an understanding that was insufficient. And so Jesus himself decided to, to help his disciples, particularly Peter, who was the Peter whom he had left as the Peter and the anchor of the church. And he had told him that, Peter, when you get the revelation of who I am as the Christ on that rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail over it. And so uh, Peter one time is praying at the hour of prayer, every day at noon, every day at 3 p.m. PM, Peter would be on his knees praying. And so one of these days, Peter is praying. And as he prays, uh, and he's hungry, he's waiting for, for lunch, but he is praying. And as he's praying, a, a, a bed sheet, uh, think about it as a bed sheet, is laid down. But it is, it is, it, it, it is, it, and, 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 and he begins to see it's not a bed sheet. It was a tablecloth. And on it was all manner of foods. And a part of that food included pork. For those who know me, yes, it included pork. Uh, but, but Peter is an Israelite and, and you don't eat pork if you are Israelite. 
Uh, and it also included rabbits. And you don't eat rabbits if you are an Israelite. It also included other animals that were forbidden for him to eat. But now, the table is laid for him and it has come from heaven. And they tell him, Peter, rise up and eat. And Peter says, no, my Lord, from my childhood, I've never defiled myself with unclean food. I'm not eating unclean food at the beginning. He, that, that shit is taken up. It's laid back down again three times. And then the Lord told him, Peter, do not call unclean what I have cleaned. Meanwhile, there is another man called Cornelius. Now, Cornelius is a Roman centurion, a, a leader of the, of the battalion of Jews, uh, I mean of Roman soldiers, about 600 soldiers are under his control. But, 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 uh, but Cornelius is a godly man. He's a man who is not Israelite, but has chosen to seek the God of heaven. But we all know, or if you don't know now, you get to know that Jesus Christ is the only way, His only truth, and He's the only life. There's no way you can come to the Father God except through Jesus Christ. But Cornelius is seeking God. Cornelius is praying. And as he's praying, an angel comes to Cornelius and tells him, Cornelius, you need to call Peter right here so that Peter can explain to you the fullness of the grace and mercy of God as it is expressed through Jesus Christ. But Peter is receiving a vision of uncleanliness. But when the men come to call Peter and tell him this is what Cornelius has told us, he puts two together and realizes God is communicating something. God is saying something that I need to pay attention to. So Peter goes with the man that had come and goes to Cornelius' house. And Cornelius tells Peter that the, the visitation of the angel, and when Peter also sees the, the vision that he had, he understands that now Jesus has brought him to the house of Cornelius to proclaim the gospel or the way of Jesus Christ to him. So, he begins his sermon. And uh, the sermon of Peter is found in Acts chapter 10. In fact, by the way, this whole story that I've been telling you is found in Acts, the book of Acts. Uh, it, it, it was written by a man called Luke uh, in, in the New Testament. And, and it has uh, this story that I've been telling you in chapter 10 recorded. And, and, and as Peter is in the house of Cornelius, he begins to share the word of God with, with Cornelius. And he, he begins by telling Cornelius, it's like, the word which God, uh, I'm starting with verses 30, right now verses 36 we are in the middle of the story but Peter has just begun the sermon so come on sit down uh, buckle up we are going into the sermon right away as Peter declares it Peter says the word which God sent to the children of Israel in other words, Peter, I mean, uh, uh, Cornelius, I am Peter. My understanding of the word that Jesus, that God sent, the word of this salvation is that it came to the children of Israel. The word which God sent to the children of Israel. This is the word. The word was preaching peace through Jesus Christ. In other words... God sent a word saying there is peace between man and God through Jesus Christ. He came saying, man, come and understand. You can have peace with God. You can be reconciled to God. God can still be your friend. You can have a relationship with God through this man, Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus and you will have life. He has ushered in peace. Amen. He has ushered in peace to you. This is not just the peace of uh, harmony and tranquility where things are going on well. No, it is the peace that cancels war. When there is war, then we establish peace. There was enmity between man and God. And God reached out to man and said, regardless of where you have been, what you have been, and what you have done, I have sent my son, Jesus Christ, for you. 
But Peter's understanding was that this was for Israel. But now God is blowing his mind and he's telling him, Peter, go to the Gentile, go to the Cornelius, go to the man who is not an Israelite, go to the man because what I'm starting here is going to go to Uganda, what I'm starting here is going to go to United States, what I'm starting here is going to go to Canada, what I'm starting here is going to go to Singapore, what I'm starting here is going to go to the Middle East, what I'm starting here is going to go to the whole of Africa, what I'm starting here is going to go to the whole of Australia, men and women from all nations, from all tongues, from all walks of life are going to be having peace. They are going to have peace. They are going to be reconciled back to me through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And so, the word that God sent to the children of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. That word, Cornelius, you know. Hmm. Interesting. The word which is being proclaimed, Cornelius knew about. But even though he knew about, it still needed to be explained to him because knowledge in itself is insufficient. Knowledge is simply the accumulation of information. And when you accumulate information, it does not necessarily mean you will get transformation. You can know a lot of things, but the things that you know may not be able, may not help you. And so Cornelius knew. So his, Peter tells him, that word which we are proclaiming, you know. Woo! You know. And may I submit here. There are a lot of people, even you people watching me right now, that know about Jesus Christ. You know. But really, your information is not leading to transformation. But follow with me. Let's move together. He says, that word you know. Why? How do you know this word? It was proclaimed throughout Judea. It began in Galilee after the baptism of John was preached. And this is it. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about Doing good. Jesus went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The goodness of God. Jesus Christ went about doing good. Jesus Christ is all about doing good. And the reason God is going to do good is because in his very nature, God is good. Somebody said God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Listen, that is not just a catchy statement we say. That is a reality some of us have learned to live. Oh yes, it is possible for you to know it, that God is good. It is possible for you to say it, that God is good. But a whole different thing to be walking and living and marching and going wherever you are going in the goodness of God. He has called us for goodness because he is good. Now, but God is not only good in who he is, they say, in his character. God is good in what he does. His acts are good toward us. That is why he says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. He has good plans, good intentions. He has you covered, my dear. God is for you. And if the Lord is for you, who can be against you? So God is good. And because God is good, even what he does is good. You see, God has chosen to express his affection upon you, my brother, my sister. You've got to believe it. You've got to learn it. You've got to arm yourself with it. Listen, I am a candidate of God's goodness. When I walk, I walk in favor. When I move, I move in goodness. I am surrounded by his might. I am surrounded by his hand. He has decided to love me. I did not love him first. He loved me first. And because he loved me, I am going 
going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's why we say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Oh yeah, you are a candidate of God's affection. You are a candidate of God's mercy. You are a candidate of God's goodness. Come on, somebody shout amen. And so Jesus came and he was doing good. He was healing the sick. He was giving sight to the blind. He was moving mountains. He was feeding the hungry. Jesus was doing good. And you know what? Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever I see someone where you are. Goodness is coming toward you this week. Oh, come on, get excited. Run around your sitting room. Get your phone out and say, yes, goodness is mine. Goodness is mine. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Because he who is on your side is greater than those that are against you. Oh, yes. You see, child of God, you have to learn to live in continual expectation of the goodness of God because God is on your side. And the goodness of God is expressed not only in his character, but also in his gifts. The ultimate gift that God gave to us is the gift of life through his son, Jesus Christ. You see, when Jesus went on the cross and hung on the cross, he was dying so that you can have life. And so Peter explains to, he, to Cornelius and says, and we are witnesses of all the things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on the tree. Can you look at Jesus? Imagine with me or draw the picture with me of Jesus hanging on that cross. Why is he hanging on the cross? Because even the Roman soldier who hung him there is also looking at the man and saying he was an innocent man. He was a godly man. Why is he hanging on that tree? Why is he on that cross? Have you considered why Jesus is hanging? Why are his hands bleeding? Why is a throne, a, a, a crown of thorns on his head? Why is there blood coming out of his side? Why are his feet pierced? Why is he hanging on the cross? Oh, brother and sister, you were not bought by the blood of animals, goats, and sheep. You were bought at a price. The price of Jesus Christ hanging on that tree. He loved you so much that he was able, he was willing to give up everything. To give up his accolade, to give up his throne, to give up his life so that you can have life. Have you believed him? Oh. Have you accepted him? Why is he hanging on the cross? He is there for me. He is there for you. He is there because of love. A love that knows no end. Oh, mercy that overflows. Oh, he calls you righteous now. Oh, and you are forever redeemed. He's on the cross for you. Come on. He is on the cross for you. He is on the cross for you. Why is he hanging on the cross for you? And so, but the good news is this. He never stayed on the cross. That's why when you look at all of us Christians, when we have crosses, he's not on the cross. Because Jesus never stayed on the cross to tell us that he overcame the powers of darkness. He overcame the power of death. He overcame the power of hell. And the Bible says that God raised him up on the third day and showed him openly not only to all the people but to, uh, to the chosen uh, here, let me read that again him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly not to all people but to witnesses chosen by God even to those who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead now listen 
my time has just run out. But next week I am coming back to continue on this sermon because the goodness of God is expressed in his love on the cross. Listen, if God sent his son on the cross, what do you think he will not do for you? If he did not spare his son, but gave him up for you, what do you think he will, do you think COVID will be bigger than him if he gave up his son on the cross? Do you think you will die in poverty? No, if he gave up his son, listen, your life will be okay. You will not die in poverty. Your life will be well. You will not die in sickness. Your life will be well. You will not die in pain. Your life will be well. Because he went to the cross, you are accepted. Because he went to the cross, you are loved. Because he went to the cross, you will succeed. Because he went to the cross, he, show, he will show you your goodness. Come on, say with me. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of God forever and ever. Come on. Yeah, shout amen. Come on, shout amen. Come on, shout amen. Woo. God bless you. Woo. The goodness and mercy shall follow you all of the day of your life. I say goodness and mercy shall follow you all of the day of my life. our praise and worship team. Oh, we are blessed. I hope you are blessed right there where you are. Please, keep watching. Keep there for the online church services we always run in this place. And we are great when you are great. And we are blessed when you are blessed. So please, those who are giving in, 
Thank you for giving in. You are the ones who are sustaining this program online. So kindly, don't go away. Our children's service is coming on next. Stay blessed. Stay glued. We love you. God bless you. Hey, you are most welcome to today's Sunday School service. My name is William and I'm right here with my little friends. And they are going to introduce to us themselves and they are going to tell us how the service is going to flow today. Hello, my name is Albright and we are going to recite our memory verse. Hello, my name is Alia and we are going to say a story. Hi, my name is Naomi. Hi, my name is Sasha. My name is Ariana and we are going to do a dance. Are you ready to dance with me? Yay! Yay! <laughs> Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 20. Watcha! I, 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 I came to save you. Watcha! Ah, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the dance. I know it must have been so great. But here with me this morning is my little friend. She's going to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Sasha. And I'm Joshua. So today, we are going to share with you a story from the book of Acts, that is chapter 1, verses 4 to 5. Now, Sasha, uh, Jesus Christ was about to ascend to heaven. Ascending means going to heaven. Now, during that time, he gathered all his disciples and he told them, Do not depart from Jerusalem and wait for the Helper that my Father promised you. Now, the helper Jesus Christ was referring to was the Holy Spirit because he knew they could not do anything without the help of the Holy Spirit. But teacher, what is the Holy Spirit? Now, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit will teach us all things and he will bring to remembrance all the things that Jesus Christ had talked about. That means I need the Holy Spirit and you need the Holy Spirit. Now, Sasha, I want to share with you. I know you have, you always play, you are a playful girl, but I also know that sometimes when you go to play, you've, you can find rough friends and sometimes they can kick you, they can knock to you. What do you do in such, a, in such a scenario? I feel bad, but a little spirit tells me that you shouldn't do this because it's bad. Wow. Now, that small voice that tells you, do not pay back, do not kick your friend, is what we call the Holy Spirit. But also that small voice will always tell you to obey your, uh, obey your parents, to be a good person. That is what we call the Holy Spirit. Now, Sasha, uh, maybe you could be wondering, could you be having something else you want to find about, about the Holy Spirit? Yes. Thank you for telling me about the Holy Spirit, but what does the Holy Spirit do? Now, just to add on what I have simply said, the Holy Spirit always makes us to be bold. Bold means that the Holy Spirit will make you not to fear. It will make you to preach the word of God. But also it will give you strength. But sometimes also when you go and pray for the sick and you have the Holy Spirit, it will actually make the other person to be well. But also it is important that you always obey your parents. And that still voice, that small voice is what we call the Holy Spirit because it will always teach you to do good things. Now, as I wind up, I want to remind all the children that always trust that you are not alone. You always have the Holy Spirit with you because when you have the Holy Spirit in you, it gives you strength. It makes you to do everything because it gives you the power. It makes you to be fearless. It makes you to be bold. Now, we are getting into our next session of prayer. Thank you so much. You've been wonderful. 
children, welcome back from that great session. Right now we are going to have our worship song and prayer. Come Holy Spirit, come, flood down like a river, presence of God, like streams of living waters, flow down, flow, presence of God, flow down, flow, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come, flood down like a river, presence of God, like streams of living waters, flow down, flow, presence of God, flow down, flow, Holy Spirit. Okay, let's pray. Hands together. Eyes closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for the gifts of life. We thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit that you left with us, King of Glory. We thank you for we are not orphans, but you left us with the Holy Spirit to guide us in whatever we do. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. My name is Alia, and we are going to recite the memory verse today. Our memory verse is from the book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. It says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, in my name, he will teach you all things and bring, to, and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Can we say it again, children? Our memory verse is John chapter 14, verse 26. It says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Thank you for watching. Bye. Where the grace runs deep as your sky.